Hey everybody, uh, this is Scott. So I thought I'd take some time today to do another quick Ember tutorial. Uh, it's been a little while since I've din done one, so I thought I would start with a pretty quick and easy one, which is the new angle bracket uh, convention for Ember components. Um, so this is something that's fairly new, certainly came out um, after I released my last video. So I kind of wanted to go over how you can convert an existing application over to the uh, angle bracket syntax and maybe some gotchas that you might not be aware of. Um, so what I have pulled up right now is um, a little side project I have with some of my friends. It's just a really dumb app where you can just bet on how much a particular movie is going to make in the box office. Well, you know, the content of it isn't really important, but I just wanted to show like an existing app um, where we can convert some uh, existing components over to the angle bracket syntax. Uh, if you aren't familiar with components, I'm not really going to cover them in this video. I do have another video that goes over the component lifecycle in more detail. This is specifically for converting old components over to the new syntax and then maybe some tips and tricks that uh, you possibly didn't know. So if we just look at the code here, this is my uh, index page. The side nav that you see here uh, corresponds to this side navigation here. So this is a great one to start with. Um, how can we convert this old side nav to angle bracket? So it's a very, very similar syntax, except we don't use the curly braces anymore. It looks like this, side nav. So the first letter of your components is always going to be capital. For dasherized names like this component is, the next word is going to be capital as well, so leading camel case. Um, one of the nice things though about angle bracket syntax is that you don't have to have a dash in the name anymore. That was something that you had to do before with the curly braces, the ember resolver needed to have a dash, um, and it just helped the resolver know that it was in fact looking at a component. So this could be called side nav if I wanted to rename the file. Um, but I don't want to do a huge rewrite. I just want to start moving over to this new syntax. <clears throat> so we can do that. And then what we need to do is pass in the same um, items here. So this is where it gets a little bit trickier. You Any sort of dynamic parameter that you're going to pass in, uh, any attribute, it has to start with an at sign. Um, and the reason for that is because angle bracket tries to solve the issue of what is an HTML attribute that I'm applying to the object, and what is an actual dynamic thing that I'm passing to it as an attribute or as a property, excuse me, to the component itself. And that's what the at sign allows you to do, allows you to differentiate between those two. So for all components, they always close with the trailing slash unless they are block components, in which case um, it would look like this and we can certainly write it this way as well um, but if you're not rendering it as a block you can just do this and because we're using this angle bracket syntax now the dynamic pieces that we pass to it do need to be wrapped in curly braces so if we just save this we come here and refresh we can see it looks just like it did before so no difference there but let's actually take a look at um, the side nav component so one of the things you probably remember um, from old components is you could do class name bindings or you could also specify uh, particular class names on it. So if I inspect this, and let me just bring this over here, you can see the class equals nav. Um, that was something that we specified on the component itself. So those rules are, are still true. If you have a class that you know is always going to be applied to a component, go ahead and specify it in the component file. But one of the really nice things now is that any other HTML attribute I want to apply, I can just write right here just like it's any other HTML um, element. So let's say data fields, data meta equals something, right? And we go and we inspect this data meta equals something. Whereas with the old components, I would have had to have done an attribute binding here in order to tell Ember that, hey, I'm going to allow people to pass certain attributes to this 
um, that I'm going to then render onto the element itself. So that's really the, the main gain for angle bracket components is that we can write really anything we want now. You can even just do styles, background red. There we go. We can see we have a red background there. So just again, just like it's any sort of um, H HTML element. So another really cool thing that comes with angle bracket components is the ability to tell the difference between a property that's passed in versus something that the component handles itself. So to kind of show this, uh, let's actually look at the template for this side nav. So it just iterates over the, um, the rounds here. So when we're iterating over these rounds, remember this is something that is passed in as our model here, and we do pass it in as at rounds. Now, if all you want to do is just change to this syntax, um, you, your job's done here, right? You've done the angle brackets. Everything's going to keep working as it was working before. But this, again, it just allows us to document some of the ways that our components behave. So I can add that at symbol here, at rounds, on this each loop. Because again, it's something that's passed in from this component. And you'll see it, it works just like it did before. However, if I had a f another attribute on this component, for instance, let's say we had um, a fruit attribute, and we're just going to call it apple. And normally, um, actually, let's just replace the title just so it's super obvious. Normally, on an old component, you would just do apple, or excuse me, you would just do fruit, and it should show the word apple everywhere, right? Because again, this is something that's set on the component on the JavaScript file for the component, and then we render it here. But if I throw that at symbol in front of it, you see it doesn't work because the at symbol indicates it was something that was passed in. Uh, it will only work for properties that were passed in. Any computed property, anything you set on the component, it won't work. However, you can do this dot fruit, um, and that will work. So it's saying this off of the component object dot fruit will show up on this page. And this is kind of the syntax that I see a lot of people doing now. Passed in attributes, throw the at symbol in front of it. Things declared on the component do this dot, you know, property name. Um, and again, it, we can still get away with doing just fruit and just rounds, just like we were before. You can see it still works. But the, the idea is to document these things. So if somebody comes and looks at um, this component file, they're going to know, oh, rounds, that's something that gets passed in. Fruit, that's something that's declared on the component object. So now I know where to go and look for those things. So to kind of walk through this from start to finish, I'm going to actually extract this, um, this stuff right here to uh, a component. So let's walk through generating a component and how we can um, leverage the new ankle bracket syntax for this. Um, so let's pull up our console and we're going to do ember generate component and kind of what is this? We'll call it uh, I guess movie information because it is essentially all of this content here for each one of these movies. Oops. Sweet. So now let's actually copy all of this. And we're going to do movie information where round equals round. And then on the template for movie information, we'll just paste all of this in. And there we go. We have all this stuff extracted to a component where we can have all that logic live. Now, if you're familiar with Ember components, though, you'll know that by default, Ember wraps everything into a div. 
Uh, if you're familiar with components like in React, for instance, you know with a React component, you always have to wrap the component. You always have to have a wrapping element. Um, the, you know, the very first thing can't be like an H1 that doesn't wrap everything. Um, so Ember is like that out of the box. However, we can opt out of that. Now, since we do have a wrapping element here, we can specify the tag name. So if we go to that component file that we just generated, component mo movie information, we can say the tag name is an article. Um, and then what we can do is, is, let me just cut this and then we'll delete the wrapping element here. And then here we can add in oops, that class and data attribute um, that we were applying to it before. So now again, it looks just like it did before, um, but I'm now applying the classes to this component. Same with the ID and that data attribute. And I'm not going through and writing all that boilerplate where I'm saying, you know, class names um, is section, for instance. Although you can definitely do it that way, and I still kind of recommend it if it's a component that's going to be used all over the place. But for this, since it's just showing up in this each loop, I'm perfectly fine um, just putting this right here. And I think the reason we have an ID is, yeah, because we can jump to particular movies. Yeah. So that's why um, that segment segment is dynamic. Now, one of the big downsides downsides with angle bracket syntax is that there isn't really um, an easy way to implement nested components. And what I mean by that is we can have a component that is essentially a child of another component. So if we look at our movie information one that we just created, um, like this ordered this unordered list or the particular items in them. Let's say I wanted to extract um, one of these to its own component. So for instance, let's take just this first one called round title. Now in the old uh, way to do this, I would say, you know, Ember generate component movie information slash round title. And that allows me to just kind of further break away some of this logic. I would take this, I would throw it into here, and then here I can now delete this, whoops, not the file. And again, this is the old syntax, movie information slash round title, where round equals round. component round title. Let me get rid of that wrapping div. So if we say there's no tag name here. So this is again the, the old way that we used to do it. Um, the link still works as expected. But if I wanted to convert this to angle bracket syntax, I can't write movie information slash round title where round equals round. It breaks because it doesn't support those nested components, um, which can be kind of a headache because I really, I really like having this kind of breakdown. It's a way for me to say this component is only going to be used by its parent. Um, it allows me to kind of encompass all of this logic rather than having this huge components um, directory. There are a few ways to kind of get around it. You can kind of game it a little bit. And look at that, I broke the entire thing. Yeah, it's legitimately crashing right now. So fair warning, don't do that because it will crash your app. Um, so how can we get around this? If you look at, uh, I'll, and I'll link this in the description, and this is kind of the um, RFC um, breakdown, it has the motivation for when to use this and stuff like that. Um, one of the examples that they have is using the um, let helper. 
So you can do this, let component, and then pass in this component with round equals round as round title. I think that's the right way to do it. And now I have that component rendered with angle brackets, but I had to do all this weird wizardry, wizardry uh, and it's just as difficult to read as, as the last iteration. So um, not something I recommend. Um, honestly, if you really wanna lean into the, um, the angle bracket syntax, I'd recommend just not writing nested components or just live with the fact that your nested components are gonna use the angle bra the uh, curly brace syntax and kind of treat that like it's a private API kind of way to document, you know, this component is only meant to be used here. Um, it's not really a public component. Um, another way we've gotten around that too is creating another component that loads the template file um, from the, the child component if that sounds confusing, it's because it is, and it's just as inefficient, and then you're creating two components just for the sake of having an easy to write uh, HTML attribute. So again, I don't recommend doing that. Um, I would say just live with the fact that if you have child components right now, it's gonna look like this, and maybe there's gonna be a better way to do this in the future. I hope so um, for right now. Let's just go back to the way it looked before, because um, I actually don't even want that component. All right, so the last thing I want to show is how can we create a nested component, or excuse me, a component that does not have a wrapping element. So remember when I created this movie, the round title component, I went in and I said tag name equals this, right? So it got rid of that wrapping div. So let's go and create um, another really, I don't know, silly component, ember generate component, and I'm just gonna call it foobar for right now. And I'm gonna go to this index page here. I'm just gonna comment this out because it's um, kind of done with converting those components over. So I have my foobar component, looks like this. It's blank right now. If we go to the template for foobar, so let's say it has a header, um, a header, and in that header it has an H1. It says hi there, this is foobar. And then maybe we have a div with a paragraph. And we'll just add this a bunch of times, whoops. <laughs> So again, we're gonna go inspect this, and remember, by default, Ember wraps this in a div for us, but I'm saying, um, you know, I have really strict styling rules. I don't want extra elements um, in my components, so I go to foobar, and I say, the tag name is nothing. This There's no wrapping div here. And again, it looks fine. It just starts with that header. And again, this is one of the, I'd say, plus sides to Ember components versus React components is I don't have to have that wrapping element. But what happens when I then pass attributes to it? So class equals something, right? And if I go and I expect this, that class name's ignored. It doesn't know where to put it. Um, so you, the way that this kind of used to work with old curly brace components was you just didn't pass attributes um, or you passed some sort of like you did like class name equals something and then on the this you could do class equals um, what we call it, class name so let's save that and let's try to inspect this again. There, there's our class. That's a way to get around it. But luckily for us, there's a really, really nice way to handle this now. And that's called 
splat attributes. So if you go like this, attributes, using the spread operator, uh, we can get away with calling this class. And now if I go and I inspect this, oops, close this. Look at that, the class name is there. Um, if I add something else like ID equals foo, let me inspect this again, ID equals foo. Uh, if we add maybe a dumb style, background is red, data foo equals bar, um, aria label equals bad component. Look at that, all of those things have been applied. There are all of our attributes to the first element uh, in that component. And that's what the splat attribute kind of spread operator does. And I think that's the coolest thing that comes with these components. I can have a component that doesn't have a wrapping element, and then I get to pick where all of these attributes get applied by just these few characters, you know, one line. Um, you can apply it to this element. Um, if I wanted to apply it to the div, I could have applied it to the div and it'll work the same exact way. See, now this has the red background. It's gonna have all those attributes that we applied. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the first element. And a lot of times, you know, you want the head to be unstyled and then the real content is down here. Um, it's like, that's a huge, huge win. And then you don't have to worry about, you know, before we were doing, you know, class equals class. And yeah, you can get away with this, but the problem is you would have to do this for every possible attribute that you might want to pass. Um, this skips that. Because we could add aria labels later. We could add described bys. There might even be some future HTML um, attributes that aren't even out yet or aren't, aren't even part of the spec yet. I don't have to worry about going in and binding those to particular values every single time um, I want a component. So that's angle bracket components kind of in a nutshell. You know, really when it comes to lifecycle hooks, um, all of those things are really not that different. Um, I think the syntax is, is great. You know, we work with a lot of UXD developers who, who mainly focus on writing accessible HTML and CSS. And this is a huge improvement because they can do things like this now. Um, it's also easier to read. It's easier to tell the difference between what is a component and what's a helper now or what's just a dynamic um, segment or attribute that we're passing somewhere. Um, it's really a great way to just differentiate the logic within our templates and there's less confusion now. Same with using the at symbol within those components. Again, it's a way for us to say this is a property that's passed in versus this is a computed property that was created by this component. So hopefully you found this uh, helpful. If not, feel free to leave a comment. Like I said, if you have questions on just components in general, I do have another video. I'll link to that in the description. Uh, but yeah, feel free to send any questions my way and thank you for watching.